first winner of the Communication Award is Nick Russell for the publication of Victoria Then and Now, Postcards from the Past. This is a new edition of the original Little Book, and it is significantly larger and better. It was designed by nationally renowned Fairfield designer Laura Minja of Lime Design in a larger format and was printed by Friesens of Manitoba. Most of the postcards, selected from the author's own collection, represent Victoria as it was in the postcards heyday, 1905 to 1914. They give a wonderful, colorful insight to the places that mattered to citizens and visitors. The postcards are shown on the left page with a color contemporary view of the same site on the right. Notes outline the changes over the past century. Some of the postcards are rare, like the Rockland Escarpment, the Clover Point Shooting Range, a shot of Government Street with a mechanic on a scaffold fixing overhead wires. Where the early postcards have written messages, these are rigorously researched, such as the young woman's laconic wedding announcement. Although there have been attempts at then and now pictures in the past, notably Cecil Clark in 1973 and Morgan and Disher in 1977, they were thin, monochromatic, and are now decades out of print. The book is a delight to read, and even the most casual reader will learn about Old Victoria from its pages. It is available at Monroe's, Bolin's, and Ivy's at under $20. The Hallmark Heritage Society is pleased to present Nick Russell with a Communication Award. The second winner of a Communication Award is Victoria High School Alumni Association for the publication of Vic High 2020. The Vic High Archives started the photo and video projects four years ago to commemorate this historic place, to capture its grandeur and the pride it embodies for this community. Since Vic High's inception in 1876, teachers, students, and parents have nurtured a unique spirit here, a diverse, inclusive, and accepting culture we know will continue as the building changes. It has been 44 years since Come Give a Cheer celebrated 100 years of Vic High history. The seismic renovation will close the school for two years while upgrades change the features once more. COVID-19 disrupted the 2020 school year, preempted school activities, and limited access to the building. Vic High 2020 plants a flag to commemorate the heritage structure and preserve its visual appearance. So take a tour with the book. Let the images capture your experiences. Vic High 2020 marks yet another milestone in Victoria High School's proud history. The images were taken by Vic High Archives volunteer Ferdy Anderson, VHS 1968, and provide a snapshot of the Vic High of 2020 before the seismic upgrading will change it forever. Here is the library. A room on the second floor and the iconic windows. The book has received rave reviews from grads of many eras and is destined to become a treasured remembrance of Vic High as they knew it. Vic High 2020 is a 96 page full color book and is available from the alumni website vichigh.com. All proceeds from the sale of the book help the Alumni Association to directly support students and school activities.
The Vic High Alumni Association was formed after the highly successful 1976 school centennial celebrations. They maintain alumni records that enable students to stay connected, support or host reunions and events, publish regular newsletters and emails to alumni, raise and invest funds and bequests to generate scholarships and bursaries, raise funds for school amenities and special projects, and manage the school's extensive historical collection of records and artifacts in the archives and museum. The Hallmark Heritage Society is pleased to present the Victoria High Alumni Association with a well-deserved communication award. The winners of the third communication award are Jacques Sirwa, Chris Garrett, Community Association of Oak Bay, the Kiwanis Club of Oak Bay, Victoria Natural History Society, Nature Canada, and Chris Edley for the tribute to J. Fenwick Lansdowne interpretive signage. This striking signage, installed at Queen's Park in Oak Bay, illustrates and narrates important stories of the artistic and natural heritage of our community. It celebrates artistic heritage in the life and art of Fenwick Lansdowne, world-famous bird artist and longtime resident of Oak Bay, as well as natural history and the remarkable local bird life that inspired him, and the beautiful Salish Sea shoreline where he discovered and studied many of the birds he painted, and where they may be appreciated by visitors today. In all, it promotes awareness, appreciation, preservation, and protection of this heritage. Early in 2019, Jacques Sirwa and Chris Garrett shared a wish to create some form of public recognition of Lansdowne's work in the Oak Bay community, where he lived and painted most of his life until his death in 2008, and where his family still reside. They approached the Community Association of Oak Bay seeking support for their idea. The association then invited local artist and art historian Robert Amos to present an illustrated lecture on the life and work of Lansdowne, whom Robert had included in his book, Artists in Their Studios, Where Art is Born, 2007. The Community Association gladly took on sponsorship and promotion of the project. With initial funding from Nature Canada, Chris Edley of Edley Signs was engaged to design the signage for the tribute. Visits to possible sites on the Oak Bay shoreline led to the selection of Queen's Park as the optimal choice. An initial concept illustration was developed and presented to interested local groups, including the Oak Bay Heritage Foundation and the Kiwanis Club of Oak Bay. The latter provided a generous grant in support of the project, followed by similar generous funding from the Victoria Natural History Society. In September 2020, Oak Bay Council was presented with the final design images for the tribute signage and approved its installation at Queen's Park. It was installed in March 2021. J. Fenwick Lansdowne was born in Hong Kong in 1937, the only son of British parents. When he was three years old, he moved with his family to Victoria. His interest in birds began around the age of five and by 13, he was painting them. He was inspired by regular outings to view local birds in their natural settings, including Oak Bay Shores. His cottage studio, where he painted since 1963, still stands at 941 Victoria Avenue. It was placed on the Oak Bay Heritage Register in 2008. The tribute signage display comprises three individual panels, one vertically oriented and two horizontal. Together, they present the intended stories of the artist, his work, and the nature that may be seen and appreciated at the site. The signs are fabricated in black powder-coated aluminum with a pale blue background on the panels to harmonize with the marine background. The three panels are ornamented with whimsical elements of silhouette cutouts of the birds depicted on the sign panels or frequently seen from this vantage point. A kingfisher, black oyster catchers, and brant geese. The vertical panel is about the artist himself. 
It presents a short biographical note in English and French and is illustrated with a drawing of the artist by Eric Zenas, a photo by Robert Amos of the artist at work in his studio, a photo of the exterior of the artist's former cottage studio, and a series of study sketches by the artist for his painting of bubbleheads, which is included in another panel. It also includes a short quote from the artist about his inspiration to paint birds, and another from nature artist Robert Gann about their childhood birding forays to local spots. The final element on the panel is a testimonial from His Royal Highness Prince Philip. The first of the horizontal panels includes three images of Lansdowne painting of birds commonly seen at this site, black oyster catchers, buffle heads, and the great blue heron with their common names in English and French and their scientific names. Each bird painting is accompanied by a short excerpt from Lansdowne's own text in Birds of the West Coast. The second horizontal panel includes images of Lansdowne paintings of the marbled burlet and brant geese, the former usually further offshore but sometimes seen here, and the latter once abundant here but now uncommon. The story of the reduced Brant population relates to the final element on this panel, a map of the Victoria Harbour Migratory Bird Sanctuary. The 1923 creation of that federal sanctuary, which includes all 17.5 kilometres of Oak Bay's shoreline, was a response to declining migratory bird populations exemplified by commercial hunting of the Brant. The accompanying text notes the need for continued protection of these birds from current threats and that this site is a perfect spot to connect with nature in the city. This is one of Oak Bay's most popular shoreline parks and presents a unique vantage point for appreciating the beautiful nature of the Salish Sea shore and its abundant and varied bird life. It was later learned that this was one of Lansdowne's favorite birding spots which he often visited with his children to see the ducks. For this amazing tribute to a local artist, the Hallmark Heritage Society is pleased to present the winners with the Communication Award. The Mark Madoff Award recognizes extraordinary contributions in the field of heritage preservation. The winners of the award this year are the Protect Oak Bay Heritage Community Group for their initiative in having Oak Bay Council establish the first heritage conservation area in the municipality in February 2020. One of the most culturally significant districts within Oak Bay, this HCA includes Francis Rattenbury's 1898 house, now Glenlyon Norfolk School, and Annandale, considered the most historically noteworthy house in the municipality. The latter was built for Sir Charles Hibbert Tupper, former Minister of Justice for the Dominion of Canada and son of Sir Charles Tupper, a prominent father of Confederation. Residents involved in the Protect Oak Bay Heritage Group since the beginning include Karen Wallace Prince, Michael Prince, Barb and Ken Grant, Robert and Barbara Long, Jill and Richard Pollard, and Charmin Minus. In August 2016, a small group of Oak Bay residents met to organize a campaign to request that Oak Bay Council establish the first heritage conservation area in their neighborhood. The area, now referred to as The Prospect, is bounded by San Carlos on the north, the Beach Drive shoreline on the east, York Place on the west, and Prospect Place Oak Bay Avenue on the southern boundary. It contains houses designed by several architects, including modern work as well. In fall 2016, the Oak Bay Heritage Foundation provided some funds to hire a heritage consultant to prepare a statement of significance for the area. On December 5th, the group made a presentation to Oak Bay Council to advocate the initiative. In February, March, and June of 2017, 
the group published three newsletters to explain the project to the public. In total, they produced and distributed nine newsletters over the next three years. In April 2017, Stuart Stark, who grew up in the area, presented a superb illustrated public lecture to a packed meeting hosted by Oak Bay Heritage Foundation and the Community Association of Oak Bay. Stuart Stark in May of 2017 and Charmin Minus in May 2018 led well-attended Jane's Walks, named in honour of the planner Jane Jacobs, throughout the proposed heritage conservation area to celebrate the historic and special features of the neighbourhood. The group created a website, protectoakbayheritage.ca, as well as creating a presence on various social media. In October 2017, based on significant public feedback, Oak Bay Council created a working group of volunteer citizens to consider how to implement the HCA effectively and to inform and guide community discussions exploring options, policies, and regulations for formal heritage conservation area designation in Oak Bay. The Heritage Works firm was engaged to assist them. The District of Oak Bay hosted information session on heritage conservation with planner Murray Miller as the presenter. In March 2018, the working group held two public sessions to explain the implications of the HCA. In February 2020, Heritage Works published HCA guidelines for the Prospect neighborhood. That same month, Oak Bay Council unanimously approved the bylaw to establish the Prospect HCA. The bylaw lists a schedule of historic features on 35 properties, such as stone walls, landscaping, and patios in the Prospect neighborhood originally developed by Francis Rattenbury and John T. Arks, among others. In total, it applies to 55 private properties, as well as public spaces including Haynes Park and Rattenbury's Beach. Mayor Kevin Murdoch said, its true purpose is that any changes homeowners want to do are sympathetic within the context of the neighborhood. Councillor Hazel Braithwaite, said many places could be the next heritage conservation area in Oak Bay if the neighbours are willing to get together and do the work. She says, it will be hard to find another group putting in this amount of time and effort, but it would be interesting to see if another group can come together. The greatest thing is how that community came together. People who didn't know each other, renters and owners, are all fast friends now. It formed a camaraderie. Councillor Braithwaite and Michael Prince also acknowledged the support of the HCA by previous Mayor Niels Jensen, who died in April 2019. It was a visit by Mayor Jensen to the Prince household in the summer of 2016 that began the grassroots initiative. The Protect Oak Bay Heritage Community Group is recognized for their four years of steadfast community-based work to achieve their goal of the establishment of the first heritage conservation area in the District of Oak Bay. They are deserving winners of the Mark Madoff Award. <laughs>